Ethan Ralph, the infamous host of the Kill Stream. Welcome. How are you doing, man? Uh, I'm doing great. How do I sound? Uh, you sound good. A little bit muffled, but it just sounds like you're on your phone. Audio's okay, though. Yeah. I'm on my phone in the uh, smoking lounge uh, in the uh, Mexico airport. Are you uh, on your way to California? On your way back? Where are you where are you headed to at the airport? Yeah, I'm a, I'm on my way to Tijuana and then to California to see my son. So, hell yeah, that's good to hear, man. Well, um, yeah, while we're uh -huh. waiting, we we're just uh, going in a little bit about the Thorps and the history. Uh, because they they always seem to find the poke their way into the to the news. And I was playing this Milo, uh, Milo Yiannopoulos going off on Ben Thorpe. Oh, he just dropped. Oh, we lost him. All right, well we'll add him back up. I'm gonna let this finish though because this is pure Kino. Okay. Um. Yeah, Ralph, you dropped. I'll I'll, I'll send you a DM or something. Rings of security. Go and get through. I know wall, where you are. I know where you spend <laughs> most of your time. Do you want me to tell you? You can tell me whatever you like. All right. Well, let me, let me, let me, I won't, I won't so dock to you. To, I'm going to, oh, well, you're it. busy, right? You're busy. You're busy. Take you have the mark of pain <laughs> upon you now. You will spend the rest of your life looking to your left and to your right. Do you know? Unless you apologize. Do unless you, you know how? You want to no. go through? You're a Catholic, no. right? You claim to be a Catholic, no. correct? Fuck, fuck no. Bro, do you know how unthreatening? No, you're not you are? a Catholic. You're do not you a Catholic. How, do you know how unthreatening you are? Do you, do you know? Do are you, you a Catholic? Are you a Catholic? Are you a Catholic? Are you a Catholic? Right. God, God bless you, Ben. Get Billy Pope, that you look to your left and look to your right till your dying day, like Cain wandered the earth in fear of his life. The mark is upon you. It's right next to your name. Your mark is upon you. <laughs> um, okay, bro. Fucking I mirthless you. laughter. Enjoy your satanic. <laughs> Just, homosexual you, is John with you? Is John with you? Is Marjorie with you? I wish you ever are, are your are really your do. lovers with you? <laughs> is your sodomy clock still there? <laughs> Watch for a sign, Milo, on that trip today. Ben, Watch ben, for a sign. That's what you're talking about, Shamu. Watch for a sign. But Ralph, you're back here. Good to have you. How are you doing, man? I'm doing great. You should be able to hear me now. It dropped out for some reason. Uh, yeah, no. And I'm on the road. Yeah, I'm um, but yeah, man, I'm here. I remember when that happened, and uh, I've been in grace. I've only went downhill since then. So, yeah, after that too, uh, he was threatening. He actually put a bounty on Milo's head to like, try to find him, and said he was gonna come to his house and everything. He was unhinged like that during that period of time when they're in that apartment. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of almost. I mean, it's basically public record where Michael Milo stays, anyway. So. Yeah, um, I know. Yeah. Yeah, he he lives in like a literally a historic um building. Uh I guess, I think it was the head of um American Apparel owned it and then there's so many lanes on it the government was like it seemed a trouble to to fuck with. And so Milo doesn't have anything to do with the lanes, but uh he's been living there, so um it, it wasn't that was known even then. So. Uh, yeah. Another uh, Ben Thorpe bullshit uh, hour there. Yeah, what, what's your take, on, current day take on the Thorpes? I know for a while you kind of tried to make Grace a thing. You tried to put her on some big streams. She BTFO'd Beardson, quite frankly. You put her on some big shows. Uh, yeah. What do you think about them nowadays, the, the Thorpe family? Well, I don't, I don't think about them too much, but whenever... <laughs> You know, people send me stuff and, hey, Rob, check this out. And, oh, my God, I don't believe what Ben said here about the lesson of your daughter and all this stuff. And so, I don't know. They've just gotten more toxic uh, since I last uh, was talking with them. Which the last time I had them on the show was probably, I don't know, very early this year. And so, I, I don't know if they're fucking crazy. I guess the long story short. but. Um, it's gotten even crazier and weirder. I guess maybe the closer Ben gets to jail, it gets really fucking crazy. So, well, I've yeah, I don't heard, know, man. I've not only heard you say this, but I've heard streamers like Destiny and almost anyone who associates with them. Shimmy, you'd probably even agree with this to a level. Um, it, 
it's in Grace's best interest to get away from Ben. Like Ben's the weird pedophile incest guy who taints the brand and is why no one will associate with them. But um, I do have a clip Shamu posted about them talking. Just real creepy stuff. I don't even really like to play it that much. But um, this is... Yeah, I mean, it's up to you. I'll listen. But... Well, Shamu, do you want to give a tiny bit of context to this? Can you see it on screen right now? Yeah, so this, uh, her brother, her oldest brother, <clears throat> was texting her. And the thing about the dynamics of the family is, like, anything that, if you try to, if any of the family members try to help Grace, they're they're going to immediately, like, leak it all online. So that's what happened here. Her oldest brother texted her and said that, you know, you need to get away from, from dad because he's, like, uh, you know, uh, abusive to you, like, sexually abusive and all that shit. And now, and then you decided to go live about it, leak everything. And now they're doing like a hypothetical to where like if that was true, what would be the issue kind of thing? Very bizarre. Yeah, so let's just watch this clip out and see her brother's frustrations. And in the past, like Ben has like not let his brother leave the house while he was wearing crutches and like was like, you know, being physical with him and shit. It, yeah, he assaulted him. He got arrested for that. Real yeah. tough guy. Yeah, no. Real tough guy, Ben. So he's angry at me and concerned for you. Okay, sure. Angry slash concerned. Yeah. Why? Okay, a supposed sexual relationship. Okay, so yeah. granting him that. So grant him that it's, let's just say, let's just say that's true. Let's just say that's true. Hundred percent. Just say it's true. Ignore the fact that you're, you're, <laughs> you're, you're completely correct about that. You're completely now correct. What? Now, what exactly is John's perception of the sexual relationship? Leans in. Thank you, Dada. That's very inappropriate for the, what we're doing right now. Please focus. You're so cute when you're drunk. Right. Then Ben repeats, you're so cute when you're drunk. Like, do you think they're playing into it? Or do you really think? I feel like this is some real sick shit. Shambu, I'd love to hear your takes. You've watched longer than I have. Yeah, so <clears throat> part of it, it is real sick shit. But part of it is also like a meta thing to try to um, fuck with his son right uh now it is there like multiple family members or whatever i believe that you know those allegations they've made they've never changed it's always been the same thing so that's you know i believe that's what's going on and um but yeah it's uh the he'll do stuff like that to just fuck with his son because you know he know they know that the family is watching so yeah there's like 12 levels of fucked upness like he's playing psychological warfare with his ex-wife yes. and his son while he's also creeping on his daughter that has a insane dependency to him well he, that's why he has a restraining order you know he has a restraining order against uh his wife put out a restraining order against him and he can't see his un uh, minor kids because there's so much like harassment and, like mental fuckery that they try to do to just fuck with his family you know so and it's like five more seconds where he says <laughs> Grace calls him a pervert. I as know. I'm, I'm drinking, right? steaming. I get the Asian. She's steaming as she as he says she's hot while he's drunk, and she calls him a pervert. Like it's such <laughs> fucked up degenerate stuff. Uh, I mean, well, Ralph, you're, uh, Ralph, you're like, I don't know why they would ever cross you because the only chance after Destiny disavowed them of having a somewhat normal internet career would be to be on platforms like like where are they gonna go? Who's gonna platform? They're, they're not gonna be on the Crucible. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, I yeah, I, I don't know, man. They totally stabbed me in the back, but um, I kind of let it go. And then I think we had them back on one more time. They stabbed me in the back again. And so then I said, well, I'm not going to let that go. Um, and then, you know, pretty much the same story from every content guy or gal that I've heard, like, you know, that they're, I mean, I said all this to them, by the way, back in the day, but, you know, I've been discussed with Elon for weeks, and, um, let's see, uh, at Mall, I guess it's in Mall of America, once, uh, it says, yeah, the, the LLG, um, uh, uh, hold on, I can't read that last part, but, um, I don't know, my fucking phone froze, but. Your mic is yeah, I, I don't, a tiny bit, uh, muffled, by the way. I don't know if you can fix it. It's still. Yeah. Here, but. I can, uh, let me see. I don't know. Maybe that'll help. Does that help some too? Um, uh, cause I'm, I'm at the airport at the smoking lounge. And so, 
It's it's yeah. just a little bit. I think it's the I outside. Mean, uh, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. No, you're good. Well, I mean, they pissed off everybody else, and honestly, you know, I've made up with a lot of people. Maybe even when I shouldn't have. You know, they were kind of putting that out there, but it was it was like a it was like a stud up basically anyway. So, um, I don't know. They're just um, I, I don't even know that they, they don't really have, you know I'm not saying they have to be like Chinese military strategists thinking 50 years ahead or whatever, but they don't they don't even think one week ahead, one day ahead usually, and so I'm not sure. Why they did all that, but yeah, that's uh, that's accurate. So for some reason, yeah, I can the rest, rest of what I was doing, but yeah, go ahead. They don't even know why they do that stuff. <laughs> that's the thing is like people, a lot of people will try to be like, you need to do this for your channel or this. Like there's still people that come in through their chat sometimes, but I mean, like the reality is, is like they can't even control like you know, there it's like a circus like they're, it's like a carnival act or something like carnies <laughs> like gypsy carnies so if they're gonna do all kinds of underhanded and weird stuff and there doesn't even need to be a reason they just that's just how they are well shammy what do you think the longevity is in that in, in the act they're doing the circus carnival act well it kind of conjured like th what they have which is uh their viewer base is 90% troll communities from like uh, Sector, IP2, um, you know, stuff like that. Just lots of different troll communities. And, um, but as far as having like a serious, like Ben at one time wanted to be like a serious like debate guy. Like that's, you know, none of that's possible anymore. And yeah. um, not, a, nothing like, not, there's not going to be like a normal audience for them ever. You know, it's just going to be trolls. Well, yeah, they ruined their image on like day one. Yeah, yeah. Um, really quick, yeah, the, I'm gonna read or go ahead, Ralph. Sorry. No, I was gonna say, yeah, the whole leaning into pedophilia thing. Obviously, you don't have to be, uh, you know, <laughs> Bismarck to figure out that was not a good idea. Uh, and so, I told them, you know, I said this on my show, but I told them privately, like, let's split you guys up. So she's not so identified with it, and you have your own. Crazy following. I don't know, but they didn't listen to me. So um, it's gotten much worse since then because there's like five bits and pubs off the top of my head. Uh, that's even worse. So, yeah. And really quickly, I am going to run through a couple of these super chats. Ashes to Ashes says Modelo. It's a shot at you. Yeah, some of the chats, maybe not all Ralph Males, but you know, it is what it is. Yeah. Um, I, I do appreciate you coming on. I think a lot of people in my chat like you. Yeah, the haters and the losers. I expected some of that. Uh, but no, no Modelo. I'm in the smoker's lounge uh, at the uh, Benito Juarez International Airport. So I still have a ways to go before my flight. So I figured, why not uh, hop on stream? I was honest to you. So, well, I uh, yeah, man. Yeah, man. No problem. Not at all. And Flight for Five says Soy Bucks for the Goy stream. Wings 007 dropped $20. I appreciate it. Says Let's Go Boys. Hashtag Stream of the Year. Kinky says My Arrival <laughs> is fucking imminent. Shout out to Kinky's cartoon. She has some great work. And then she also says Hi to you, Ralph. Um, Hello. Yeah. Hello, Kinky. I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, go ahead. And now that she done that, I kind of do. I feel like I almost need to play the Sorry Gator clip there. You know, she. Um, one second. Sorry, Gator! <laughs> I'm on the way home, bitch! My arrival is fucking imminent! Let's fucking go! Shout to you, Kinky. I appreciate it. Very and cool. Just two more. N word boy, hater super chat, it seems, says, Hey, Ralph, any plans to make another trip to the EU and get beat up? LOL. Uh, no, but I had plans to fuck your mom, though. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, some. Like the uh, dirty also, skank she is. Yeah. Take that, N word boy, you piece of shit. Um, and then he says, We're so proud of you, cousin, it's Mazel Tov. Well, I'm not Jewish, but thank you for the super chat. But yeah, um, 
What was it gonna? Oh yeah, so Ralph, you're a man of many enemies, uh, from the likes of Mr. Sure. Medicker, Lauren Southern, all these people. Yeah. But I'd say the most prominent and active enemies in current day 2024 would probably be the Kino Casino. And it turns out earlier this month, one of their fans got uh, busted by no other than Alex Rosen as trying to meet up with a 13 year old, a pedophile. Uh, you know. That, that's correct, and we had Alex Rose on the show, and they did really well, and he didn't even really, uh, you know, he, he kind of sidestepped that a little bit, which I respect, but he didn't really go at them. He just presented the facts as they were, and he was on my show for, I don't know, I think it was 90 minutes to a couple hours, something like that, and they were pissed because, you know, fake cancer man and all of them issued a decree you can't go on Ralph's show well i've had 20 to 30 guests or more since then so um they don't really control anything either one of those entities fake cancer man or the king of Christina, so they can't tell me shit. and you know i've been at this um consistently more than either one of those people uh well uh persons i guess i should say so is it not, is it not bizarre that like a miss being caught for messaging a 13 year old you just start talking about review tech usa and the kino casino that's like the it doesn't surprise me that they have some pedophile fans it shocks me that they feel the need to bring it up to alex rosen you know what i mean yeah i bizarre on like 25 different levels just bringing <laughs> that up but like if that was going to exonerate him because he was like he was there to meet a minor right so there's really no exonerating that. Now, I don't know if he ended up getting out of his charges or, or what's going on with all that, but, you know, sometimes that happens with these types of busts. But, yeah, he was a, he was a you know, casino super fan. Chris Blevins, uh, Chris legendary Blevins. figure. Yeah. 17 second clip. I'm going to let play here, then we'll move on because I don't want to spend too sure. much. I mean, I also saw that another hater of yours, Cog, was live to eight people today streaming video games. Uh, it's it's tough out there. Yeah, it's, it's not even worth acknowledging yeah. him but yeah I, I i know he's ha he's having a tough time yeah don't show me but like if i were to search it up could i see a youtube video on that which one do you want to see the review tech and the dropbox shit you ever watch kino casino <laughs> nope oh, okay well, they uh, too. yeah i just felt that was worth sharing predator um, poachers turning his sights uh about accident, by the way, that wasn't his, you know, he wasn't going after them. He, he wasn't saying, oh, let's catch a Pino Casino fan. It's just the odds and, you know, time and day, right? And they caught a Kino Casino super fan. It's uh, amazing, really. And I know the 800-pound uh, food add addict and the mushmouth crack cane, crack cane, <laughs> crack smoking addict, uh, I think that makes sense, though. Crackane, I think you understand. Uh, do you understand? Uh, yeah, I the baby killer. But uh, Andy Warsaw. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I, I, I'm not surprised by any uh, lie or obfuscation that comes out of their camp. Uh, you know, Esso Shaggy's been completely hammering them. They've been why I, I wouldn't have seen it without Esso Shaggy, but he's posting them crying about it and. Oh my God! How how could you do this and reveal people when they do the same exact thing? So um, it, it's good to see uh, Esso wrecking them and long term being a wreck themselves. So it's whatever. Yeah, it it has been nice to see his return. Now Shamu, um, I didn't want to drag you in any casino stuff, but this post caught my air because I've always hated this faggot Lalo. Uh, what's the back? <laughs> What's the backstory <laughs> behind him sitting in the cuck chair and like driving out or flying out to hang out with Grace and Ben here? Lalo is like a, he's such a strange guy. So he started going on their shows and every, the kind of joke is that he's like a sociopath because it seems like he doesn't have feelings or something. He's very odd. And um, he, he, like a lot of these simps, all of her simps are super fucking weird. They're all like lol cows in their own right, to be perfectly honest. And um, he just started to meet up with them and he became obsessed with Grace. And they kept, Grace and Ben set this up. They're like, you got to come in. You know, they, they were being like really mean with him and aggressive. Like you have to come in and all this stuff. And so he did, right? And of course they fucking embarrassed the fuck out of him and start to cuddle and stuff with him in the fucking RV. And oh. uh, 
it's so awkward and he hasn't been online since this tweet by the way i yeah, haven't seen he not? did he decide no. to take a break <laughs> he's gone now i think uh after this happened i think the i think uh kino casino covered it and he was a big fan of them but he's a you know lala well, you can see they're sharing Mark, the blanket though. they're in a bed and he's in some kind of like cuck chair off in the corner holding a yeah. goofy baby blue mug just watching them there's a clip if you go down on the thread there's a clip of him actually there's a little edit that i did too i think it's the last one you know, it smells like shit. okay help me um <laughs> the last one there you could probably just play it but if you look at Are his you guys... hands in one of the clips like he tries to like touch her but then like doesn't it's very okay odd. and it starts off with a yawn too you can tell the night's over and look at how he's <laughs> looking yeah. down look at how he's looking down upon her it's okay Hello, darkness, my old friend. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, it smells like shit. It reeks of shit. You guys have no idea how bad it was. Because a vision saw you know, when you're goes over the plane. Left it's while I was cuddling up on Ben. Oh. Yeah, you guys better get some food. I'll, uh, I'm going to go back yeah, down, but um, yeah, let me know, Lalo, if you are actually coming. I will make some accommodations for you. Well, what was that? I don't Actually, know. Coming, it looked like he went for like an aggressive. Yeah, yeah, yeah he, he was put her in a chokehold or grab a blanket. He got aggressive because he realized, like, oh my god, this looks like I look like such a fucking retard right now. <laughs> the fourth quarter and, with no timeouts, like. But um, and he talks about when he's saying uh, it smells like shit, it reeks of shit. That's the RV. The RV toilet has been broken for a year and they've been driving around in this RV going all over the place and they're just like they shit in the RV but it's broken so it just reeks of shit <laughs> reeks of shit and cigarettes well isn't the beginning of their the the Thorpe's origin story didn't they have like a hundred grand started a restaurant failed then bought a Wait. house lost it like it it's just like way a... more so here's the thing that uh a lot of people probably don't know um like they're very gypsy like ben and grace but the thing is is that before the money came in they were dumpster diving at a time now ben's father helped Jesus. him out and loaned him a bunch of money to sell properties and they got literally a million dollars and uh and when they got the million dollars um ben just like spent it he would put a lot into stocks and then if they needed money he would just like sell even if it was like low just shit like this over and over again buying shit they don't need and then when YouTube started, they probably had around 300 grand left. And um, and that's when they started. And that was two years ago. And all that money's gone. It's all gone. So he they literally ran through a million dollars in like five or six years, I think, if I recall. I think that's right. But yeah, his dad basically like, he, you know, here's your life. You know, here's a million dollars to take care of you and your family because you guys had nothing. And, you know, How you long can take that a horse of water, but you can't make it drink. You know, he's a gypsy. So he just fucked it all up. <laughs> All right, we'll wrap up this clip of Lalo getting cucked before I move on. We'll make some accommodations for us. <laughs> it's tough. It is. You never want to be Lalo. That's one thing I'll always say. You never want to be a Lalo. Yeah, man. I don't know. I, I'll be never, surprised. Never, ever, ever, ever. I mean, he, he probably will come back or whatever, but I can tell just because he has been totally gone since that happened. So I think it probably fucked with him a little bit. Why the fuck did he ever go? Like, what was he thinking? Because that's how simps, that's the thing is like these simps, man, like uh, all of them have, one of them uh, was arrested for cyber stalking. Like they're all like weird in their own way, like her her big simps. And she just uses them. It's like, okay, I'm going to meet you, you know, and then we're going to, you know, embarrass the fuck out of you and, um, you know, do all this weird shit. I mean, it, it doesn't take much because you're, you're walking into a situation that's already like super fucked to be with them. IRL. Yeah. But they in all a, in like a non it, like the uh, RV that reeks of shit and piss. <laughs> yeah, like, it, but they're all infatuated with Grace, so they're willing to to do it, and it always ends up in disaster. That's why her Sims, man, they're like like I said, they're all wall cows in and of themselves, really. All right, and to close off for the most part this whole Thorpe shit because they should just be discarded to the gutter and never spoken of in all reality, but um. <laughs> You posted a clip that allegedly it came from uh, their public defender where Grace was dressing up like a whore to court. Is that yeah. the, the proper context? Oh, and they lost yeah. their shit over that, too. Yeah, go ahead. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Their lawyer um, called them the night before, and they were going to fire him the next day. They already planned on it, but he left them a voicemail being like, uh, if you could stop dressing so slutty, you know, it might help you in court, <laughs> basically, is what he's saying. We'll hear it from the horse's mouth. Attorney from Dudley, Mass. I'm calling you regarding the hearing tomorrow. If your daughter's going to show up, uh, please make sure that she wears something more appropriate than she had on last time. Um, it was a little much last time, so uh, <laughs> have a dress uh, <laughs> more conservative. Show some fucking <laughs> humility, you fucking harlot, Grace. No one needs to see all that. But um, apparently she was flashing her pussy and stuff like that. Like, I don't even know. Um, is that the no, lead, he, Ralph? That's the rumor. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. If you listen to the whole clip, he talks about that. I think. Um. But yeah, she was doing some Sharon Stone type uh, maneuvers there to the judge, and he wasn't impressed. Needless to say. But like, uh, I'll say the favor over the judge, maybe. I, I man, I don't even know. Um. Perhaps she was trying to let him know what he could um, avail himself of if he ruled the right direction, right? So I I, I, I don't know, man. They're nuts. So I couldn't say for sure what goes through their mind. But. So um, <laughs> I, I, I got to move past these this Thorpe family because they're just too sick to even continue talking about. Um, I know yeah. the both of you – Ralph, a longer history, but you a more current one, have a long history with the king of pole, Brian Dunn. Um, Ralph, would you like Ooh. to get into uh, – are you not interested in even acknowledging acknowledge Bri Bri over there? Um, I mean, what is there to say, really? Like, he's fucking crazy, and so um, I, I, I don't – he's probably even crazier than the Thorpes in a lot of ways. So um, – you know, I've known him for 10 years. Um, early on, I could tell he was a bullshitter. I just didn't know how, you know, it's like pathological to him, something in his brain. Uh, you know, they had medication for that. I don't know if it would work in his case, but um, he's one of the biggest liars I've ever known in my life and maybe the biggest liar I've ever known through my online contacts. And... We'll just lie about this. I mean, when there's no reason to even lie, you know what I mean? I'm, I I guess he gets some thick, thick thrill out of it, but do you just think lying believes, when Do you think he genuinely believes the lies, or he's lying to be malicious? I think at first he, he might be lying to be malicious, but um, I, I think he kind of tricks himself into like George Costanza. I've said this before. You know, it's not a lie if you believe it, right? Um, and, you know, you tell yourself the same thing over and over again. And then maybe deep down, you don't, you know, it's not true. But I don't know. It's almost like he, tri he, he works himself into believing this nonsense. So, Shamu, you probably know what I'm leading into. But before we get into it, I, I know you have a history with uh, King of Pole. You know, you thought he was just like a happy-go-lucky internet spurg, and then he slowly turned on you. He says you're Ethan Ralph's chief of staff. Uh... Yeah, he says all kinds of crazy shit. But yeah, I, I mean, I've known Brian, uh, King of Pole for for like almost a decade, like just, you know, in the same circles and all this stuff. And yeah, I just thought, I honestly, like I never paid attention to all this stuff, all of his history or anything like throughout the entire time. But I was just like, you know, whatever fell bad for him so you know let him around and stuff and he can be pretty entertaining and all that stuff but um yeah as soon as uh he started doing like content again because uh grossly and i were were doing content and stuff he would get these like weird things in his mind that people were like after him or blackballing him and all this stuff and then at one point um uh, grossly had this like beef with this woman and he was like platforming her and she was like threatening to get his kids taken away he was, and then that led into like him blackmailing me while I was doing a, an interview on Ralph's show about the Thorpes, where he was like threatening to like put all this shit out there and like leak all this information unless I got him on as a guest, which is like, it's not my fucking show. So I don't yeah, know. I think why those DMs doing. leaked. I remember seeing those. He's yeah, like, yeah. Talking about he's going to break your fingers or he's all, all this shit. Yeah. Yeah. It, and it's just like crazy. Like none of it has any really basis in reality, but he's very volatile. So if like you're trying to do stuff online and he's around or anything like that, he can he can he can really cause a shitstorm. 
really easily. And there's been a lot like over his period of uh, time online. So, yeah, he's definitely a liability. Uh, I, I will say that. And so, yeah, that had nothing to do with you. That was me. And, you know, other people, yeah, I have a handful of people I talk to about certain things sometimes. And th they were all to a man saying, keep him off your fucking show, dude. And so I tried to do it politely. And he was also, like you said at that time, picking up a bunch of bullshit about grossly and you. And it's like, man, I don't want, you know, I, I like you guys, so I have nothing to do with his not. And he's lying. You know, he, ever since I've known him, he's lied, lies nonstop, right? So yeah. I, I can't, I can't have somebody like that around. I try to be polite about it. But of course, you can't really with him. So, Ralph, what do you think if you were to guess he's up to in current day, just in like a one sentence response? Uh, homosexual activities. <laughs> well, it's not a bad guess, but um, you'd be wrong. <laughs> um, well, well, you're probably right. Well, I, I know, I know about but... his D and D game or whatever. Uh, yeah. so. <laughs> I wanted to show this. I, that I sounds pretty homosexual, though. But yeah, go ahead. I was gonna originally lead it on and try to let the chat and you guys figure it out but shimu published it um the title of shimu's tweet king of pole has created a dnd sector tabletop game where the dungeon where the dungeon master in his world his internet and, and enemies physically and sexually violated during these sessions these leaks of king of pole graping godwitson while another has him playing as Elaine Miller. So here's Brian, like, pretending to be Elaine in a weird, twisted rape fantasy, I believe. It still says Don Elaine in your phone, by the way. Interesting. It says, Where are you? You were supposed to be back home. Why didn't you come home? Are you still mad at me? Oh, God. Who even does this, anyway? That would you take um, yeah, you'd have to think, like, who's the other partner at play in this besides Brian? Yeah, uh, another freak, I'm sure. Well, he's got a whole... So, I don't know any of the people that are in there. I really don't. They These two clips were posted on um, the farms and I think Cal at some point. But apparently, he's got a whole rule book. He's got you know, character sheets <laughs> of everyone, of everyone, even people that don't make content, just people that are like in these circles just and in the servers and stuff. Yeah. And it's really a way to like live out these fantasies uh, of like destroying the people that is his enemies, like, you know, in some way, like physically and sexually, he's fucking if he crazy. If he rules a nine, he destroys Godwinson. If he rules an eight, he gets the defile Persip. Yeah. Yeah. It's That's, wild. It's a bizarre world Bry's living in. I, I just can't even imagine doing that. Yeah, I can't that. either, Ralph. I can't imagine it either. Lawrence <laughs> just, just like kind of like like in his head just goes, oh god. And he calls the Don Elaine number. Oh, okay. Ring a ring. Ring a ring. ring. You hear a pickup? Don. Elaine? Elaine? Oh, <laughs> oh it's like that now. Uh, honey, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, honey. Uh, so he's having weird D&D &D sessions where he talks about, like, raping Elaine with his fellow male Discord users. It's just so fucking bizarre. It's beyond, right? Like, It always ends up in rape fantasies with him. I, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, you know, if I was him, I would just go away, but... He's a glutton for punishment, so... <laughs> Brian's never going away, Ralph. You know that better than anyone. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you just called me one of your fucking whores? Is that what no. we're doing? Huh, Lawrence? No, you no, 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 no. Wanna have a little here. fun? Fuck it's you. Hangs no, up the phone. No, no, no. Just hung up the phone on you. You wanna no, call back? No. Just Why does his Elaine impersonation sound like a New Yorker? I, I, I don't know. He made Elaine Italian, He made some Elaine some Italian uh, gay dude, I guess. I don't know. The fuck you want now, Lawrence, huh? You turn another whore to that? No, no, no. Don't no, bring no, another no, fucking no. filthy whore. No, 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 that's not what's happening. That's not what's happening. 
I physically can't bear through any more of this cringe, but I know the second video, I think he directly names you and uh, Godwinson. Yes. So this one's just one minute. It's a lot less to uh, try to get through. One just says Adam Edge. The other one says... <laughs> well, this is where he... Des is he describing, like, the dice he rolls, like, for his game about who he's going to rape in the sector or murder? Specialized guy. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, one just says Adam Edge. The other one says Ethan Ralph. Oh my! And underneath it, it says "fuck the anarchy." Mm. You tell him, Brad. Oh my! <laughs> I go. Hmm. I go. So this is the these are the people that wronged you, huh? Seems awful. As you say that, that drawer gets thrown and broken across the fucking wall. I can understand how angry you are. No matter. I go. You have my word that if you continue to stay by our side and help us, Mr. King of Pole, we will find this Ethan Ralph and bring him to justice for what he has done to you. That is my gift to you as my friend, uh, as a friend. As you say that, you feel the, the cold chill around your neck again. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Rape them. You have a stick <laughs> out? Like, it's crazy. <laughs> He's the, this guy. I'm going to run that back a few seconds. I will rape them. Indeed you will. Indeed, in due time. In due time. As that said, you feel the cross around your neck kind of vibrate a little bit. Insane. Well, there's Holy, there's Holy Man Brian playing D&D uh, &D games about raping East Celebs he dislikes. Yeah, I would say it's pretty blasphemous, but, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. that's a, <laughs> the mental illness uh, shines over that, honestly. I just can't. It's so amazing. The fact that anybody, you know, and especially him would, like, create a game like this to just take his aggression and his hatred out on his enemies is, like, just amazing, man. It's psychotic great. as fuck. Yeah, I wish he would stream it so bad. I can't. <laughs> I put a comment on the uh, under the tweets like, just stream it because whoever's in there, you know, is gonna leak this stuff, obviously. So just fucking go live and do it. Do it live. Fuck it. Yeah, I mean, he hasn't had a private conversation in like many years. He might as well just do it live. He went live on his Arm Toast Twitch channel like a couple weeks ago. I saw. Yeah, he and that title of that stream was Elephant in the Room, but he didn't really talk about anything that was like, you know, pending or important. I think he was going to, and then he decided not to, but the poll show's back, baby. We're back. <laughs> um, here's a couple of <laughs> chats. This one's a little negative. Dave So Three says, you know, Jim was right about you, Rage Pig. Well, Jim's allegedly has like a million broken bones and is dying of cancer. Yeah, he's in uh, eternal pain, according to him. Um, so, yeah, the sooner he's dead, the better. Um, of natural causes, of course. Uh, you know, I don't encourage anybody to help him along, but uh, yeah, that doesn't bother me. These people are losers. So. And Taco says, "Big ups, happy Friday, happy Friday, Taco." Banana mm -hmm. Bear from the current Corin from the Banana Bear shows for the harvest. Does Ralph miss Daddy Jim? You know these guys; they have an infatuation with Jim. What do you think about that, Ralph? Um, a lack of a father figure in their life, probably, um, and then just mental mental illness. Maybe not as bad as Brian, but um, yeah, they're they're weird people, uh, and so you know, for some of these people um jim is like their god or whatever um and so you know I, I i can't wait for the tribute show i hope he really is sick i hope he really is suffering and you know i i'm beyond it doesn't bother me these people are crazy too so it's whatever and ashes to ashes or five says ask ralph if he'd be interested in debating a black israelite uh no Okay, well, that's fair enough. They aren't worth that much time, to be fair. They're kind of loony. Well, I mean, I, I have uh, Tazaria. He's, he's been on our show. We set him up with a lot of different debates. Um, but, uh, no, as far as me debating them personally, no, why would I? Yeah, that's fair. You're just going to have to deal with I, I mean, you've heard the arguments a million times. Like you said, you host Tazaria. Yeah, yeah. I I have no... I have no personal desire to debate it. So. And Wings Double. I'm the host. I'm the moderator. Why would I do that? But anyway, yeah, go ahead. You're good. Last one. Wings 007 says, Base Ralph. Shout out to you, 007. Um, Shout out. 
Good to see at least some Team Ralph Mills in here, not just a bunch of hating <laughs> and gym fans. Um, Shamu, you've been in a – you did a video. I watched it when it came out a couple months ago on Fallen Chungus. What's – if you don't mind, can you give me a brief TLDR on what that guy is? I know that he's constantly deleting his Twitter. He was in a big beef with like all of his family members across the platform and stuff like that. Yeah, so Fallen Chungus has an account. I think it's like, oh, uh, it's a lot. It's like I think it's hundreds of thousands of people on Twitter, and he he makes memes, and uh, he started to get into fights with um, right wing people and. Um, and they started to basically take his memes and do like racist stuff with them. And he would just freak out about it. And he's been kind of at war with them ever since. And it kind of came to a head where he was freaking out so much online and uh, causing so many issues that his parents kicked him out for a time. And when that happened, uh, he was using his fans to harass his family and specifically his aunt by like giving, they would find where she was working, leave a review bomb yeah. her call her phone i think he even leaked her phone if i remember right yeah there were docs like there were docs and her in his discord and stuff like that i saw yeah and so when that happened um i was already doing a video on it and i was like well if they're gonna try to fuck with her business or whatever then i'm gonna reach out so that's what i did I, I emailed his aunt and just said hey you know this is what's happening they're trying to fuck with you and uh got a comment from her for the video <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and uh, so that happened and he seemed to be doing better but he goes through cycles he does this all the time you know he's deactivated his twitter twice over the last couple of days and he'll just kind of spurg like that and then start to freak out and he's been at war with this uh with a soy jack party for like forever i mean it's a little bit it's a little bit brian-esque is it not yeah yeah it's similar right <laughs> like that's what i thought about when i was like oh he, you know he needs like a cycle I, that's what i was thinking about uh because it's it's just over and over again um but yeah it's pretty entertaining and ralph i don't know how in the know you are about this guy but i do know that he tweeted out shit talking you oh. getting trolled by the way saying this is augie's roommate then he quote tweeted it saying terrible fortune and it was a photo of you and nicholas diorio was dabbing on, on him of all people so he's not a yeah, Ralph no respecter. He's a total fag. I, I know almost nothing about the guy besides what Shimu was posted. And so, I don't know. He seems, like you said, on the Brian level, a lot of different uh, correlations, similarities, whatever you want, word you want to use. But, uh, you know, deactivating for a day, reactivating. Brian's done that a hundred times. Um, so I, I don't know much about him because he's not worth my attention. But uh yeah uh, it's definitely a uh a weird individual <laughs> yeah it doesn't seem very stable i've pretty much only seen shamu's coverage on him what when it comes to like knowing anything about him yeah exactly i ne I never heard about him before then yeah it's really great though i mean it's funny that he can't take you know he's making these like really basic you know art memes or whatever right the, the art of his memes are very basic so people take them and they do all kinds of shit with them but he can't handle it he fucking freaks out about it and he's also like a cry bully he'll go after those people right try to bully them ratio them and fuck them up and then as soon as they you know come back and try to give him a taste of his own medicine he freaks out and does all this stuff you know so that's a big thing too about him yeah and Ralph, really quickly, um, I, I still have a lot of other t shit to cover. If you're not open to it, I see people in the chat asking if they can call in. It's sunny, or it's just like random no. shit. And you're not open. All right, well, that's I'm cool with that. Let's just check in. No, if they want to call in, they can uh, send me some money, and then I would be open to that. But uh, otherwise, they don't get any time with me. Fair enough. Send it to uh, Ralph's power chat if you want to call in Corim or any of the other haters in chat. Um, so uh, Shamu, I think you covered this too, and I know Ralph did. He went on a whole war. What do you guys think about the whole VTuber uh fucking takeover and how they've been getting banned from Twitch, Twitch rightfully so, left and right? Um, these people who kind of appeal to pedophiles. What do you think about that broadly? Um, uh, you want to start with me? Go ahead, Shamu, and then I'll I'll speak. Okay. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think VTubers are are at the at the in the best case scenario are cringe, and in the worst case scenarios are literally just you know kind of um, 
making content for like pedophiles. They they'll go on and in like baby things and talk in baby voices and and they'll talk about sick shit. There was one the Kiwi person who was talking about you know liking um was that the Gator one the that was oh, the Gator hey, one yeah hey Rabba <laughs> yeah the one that Gator talked to uh, she was talking about doing weird stuff with like or she was into toddler con is what she said. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> That's fucked up, man. And so, yeah, it just kind of, they're just creating content for them and they're weird. And I think it's sick. And I think that people that consume that kind of content, I think it's probably not good for their brain. You know, I, I don't understand it at all. And I just think it's degenerate and fucked up. So I, I'm not a big fan. Ralph, I probably already uh, know your take, but what what do you think about this? Um, uh, you know, they're a gaggle of pedophiles, and they should be run off everything ever. Um, and if you make excuses for that, I mean, we went over it pretty thoroughly on my show, but you know, they make uh, what is it? Uh, uh, Pippa Pipkin, the sick. I don't even know uh, what you would call her. Uh, the uh, deranged. Yeah, the rabbit bitch is even worse, but uh, but Pippa, what she calls safe and legal pedophilia, um, I, I think that's a pretty good description. I, I don't think it's safe, but uh, I guess it is legal. So that's that's how they make their money, and um, you know they'll they'll if you let them talk long enough, they'll say it. And she said it, and others have um, played into it. I wouldn't say she's the worst. You know that fallen shadow, and some of these other people are even worse than her. Uh, but um, yeah, it's it's pedophile content for pedophiles and aspiring pedophiles, uh, and they should be put in prison. And also, what's worrisome about it is um, there's shit like this where I mean, this guy Cyrax is a known pedophile. He's utilizing the software for the VTubers to try to attract in the kids. This guy's been catfished a million times, and like, you know, here he. Is. Oh wait, I think it's muted. You know, oh, like he's doing VTuber stuff now. That's I understand that I'm not liked very much. You know, like if if you have a guy like this, be, we should just picture all VTubers. This is the first <laughs> model is is Cyrax Chance Wilkins, right? None of these people can be trusted. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and if that's your idea of entertainment, you're probably either a pedophile, um, you know, knowing that you're a pedophile, or it's like subconscious for you and you need to get, uh, well, you know, there's an old story about a rope, um, but uh, you could do that or just um, fuck right off. I, I don't know. I, I, I can't understand, you know, uh, being titillated by cartoons or some, you know, sad, ugly bitch or a tranny or, you know, a fellow pedophile for them um, is, you know, I don't know, man. It's sick to me. We went off on it on the kill stream many times, uh, and I I reserve the right to go back in on it. I just been focused on the election, and so that kind Luckily, of uh, dropped Twitch, it for me. Twitch has been putting their foot down a little bit. They've been banning them for the most part, um, like pretty. Yeah, they've been. Yeah, they've also been. Uh, you see that Twitch had a ban on and no no one from Israel could make an account on Twitch, and that like I did see that. Lines yeah. trying to. Get rid of all the pro terrorist people. It's kind of a bizarre arc to witness. Yeah, I haven't uh, looked too much into it, but it is it is something that I've been kind of wanting to look into more. I know that they are people are attacking them for having um, really like you know anti Israel type See? streams, I guess, or pro terror, exactly. pro Hamas and stuff like that. Is that kind of the deal? Yeah, they brought on this guy from OTK and Miskiff Streaming Network, one of the bigger guys. He's brown, I forget his name. And Hassan sat him down in a stream and just was playing like ISIS and Hamas like uh, like hype videos pretty much. It was Oh my god. It was bizarre. So I can under I mean I'm not a the, I'm not the biggest advocate for Israel, but it's also one thing to have your biggest political streamer showing like literal Hamas like propaganda from terrorists, you know what I mean? Yeah, I agree. For sure. Um, Shamu, I know you're interested in this. I can't pull up any clips of it, but what do you think about Lucas Gage and the trajectory he's been on recently? Lucas Gage is somebody... Oh, Ralph, you got uh, people coming through the phone. Uh, Yeah, somebody asked to borrow my lighter. I'm in the smoking lounge, so... Oh, okay. But Lucas Gage, uh, 
Uh, yeah, I mean, I would love to do a video on Lucas Gage. It's just nothing that you could put on YouTube, <laughs> but I mean, it's one of the more interesting, like his whole war with, um, I guess it was like BAP or something like that. But I mean, it was crazy. Like they were, they were calling and doing all this shit. But the problem was, is that Lucas Gage wouldn't like no sell it. He kept posting online. And <laughs> he would document all, every, he would document every single thing that happened. Anytime the cops showed up. They were sending him like start up Israeli... a vlog. The Jews are sending more pizza. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, it was, it's fucked up, but it was fucking hilarious. I mean, like it really was because like, like I don't just... condone the harassment, but his no. reaction was pretty fucking funny. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was so funny. Um, and people tried to tell him that's the thing about Lucas Cage. Like there were plenty of people like being like, "Hey, man, you need to like stop. You know, stop." posting about it. he's like i'm not gonna let the jews win and so he's like look at these books they sent me today and they sent him bags of coal and all kinds of shit for like yeah, a month doing, he, they were sending him a bunch of kosher food and he was doing videos throwing it all <laughs> in his trash can. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, gage news. is off Go the ahead. reservation uh yeah i don't know yeah he's uh he's kind of lost it a little bit out there more than a little bit, actually, but Anton says if you stop smirking online, the Jews win. Maybe there's a message in the madness. <laughs> I don't know if that's true or not. Uh, another news: I've... RPG came back recently. He's been doing kick and YouTube streams, mainly just chill gaming streams. But that's that's exciting to see. Yeah, and he's going to be on the Halloween Halloween Day show. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be day or night, but the Halloween show for the Kill Sheen. Um, and I've been told he's got a surprise announcement. I have an announcement myself, and uh, I'm very excited about that. I believe it's this coming Thursday. So, um, you know, I'll be back. Uh, like I said, I missed um, Thursday because I had an appointment. I missed today because he's going to see my son. But uh, I should be back, barring any delays in flights or whatever. Uh, I shouldn't interfere with my shows next week. So. Uh, should have a full slate, and he's part of that full slate. I'm looking forward to it. Me too. <laughs> Shimu, what's your Very take? Very much. What's your take on RPG, Shimu? RPG? Um, I mean, I think him coming back and streaming is good for content. Uh, there's a lot of people that dislike RPG, and he's had his whole war with all these different people. So, I mean, I think any kind of streaming from him is going to be – it would be good for content and is a you know is a good thing for entertainment so i think that part of it's pretty good i don't really know that much about him i know that he was on cozy and that he was like a no he was never on cozy contest. they the cozy people oh. hated him they said we'll give you a cozy channel and they never did and they kind oh. of him over. okay so i know he was like a nick fuentes a log for a long time and then uh he had a big fight with you know all the other a logs on twitter that's about all i know though um but I definitely think that him streaming is, you know, that's content, so that's good. And um, Ralph, since Shimu is here and he has the iconic CRP PFP, uh, what are your thoughts on CRP pretty much being killed by Ukraine uh, and the Ukrainian establishment? Um, well, I talked about this on my show. You know, we used to be pretty tight. He was at Knoxville, and um, basically it was Warski that had the the beef that kind of drove him away or whatever course he blamed me and we never really got it back on track you know i think he still considered me an enemy whenever you know he got captured and so i you know i did the it was tongue in cheek some people i don't think got it but uh, i did the champagne celebration when it looked like he was dead at first but that was really a memorial show for for crp now it turns out he wasn't dead uh we all we did was end up watching his videos and laughing and you know, honoring his memory, really. And then he he ended up not being dead. And uh, they took him into custody. And then he escaped uh, after he was out. They let him out on bail. And he tried to cross over into Russia. Of course, that didn't work out. That wasn't the most solid game plan. I don't know. I, I, I hate that he ended up, like, ended up like that for him. I didn't want to see him dead. And I wish I wish he could have made that. He didn't you know, go she out. Could have that. He yeah. didn't go out like a true showman, though. He he scheduled oh, three yeah. videos, smoking his cigarette, and he's like, "If That's I don't, awesome. if you don't see me, raise a ruckus." Very Joker esque, you know. Uh, yeah. Uh, 
you got a RIP to CRP, regardless of if bridges were mended or they weren't. And he was no, right about why... Andy Worski being four things. You can't take that away from him. He was 100% right. Um, I, you know, it's a little bit surreal for me because, you know, it ended up becoming a worldwide story, uh, you know, under his Gonzalo Lira, you know, his actual name. But he'll always be coached to me. And like I said, just a really surreal experience. This guy that, you know, was on my show. And uh, yeah, you can just smell it. Go ahead. Um, he was on my show. And we, we shared a lot of memories together. And now he's like a cause uh, celebrity uh, across, you know, uh, I guess you could say the distant right or the uh, very online right wing. And, you know, I think uh, Ukraine had him murdered. And, um, fuck Ukraine, and no matter what we had, you know, personally as far as beef, um, he didn't deserve that, and I, I it is a regret that I, I never got to, um, you know, settle that. I mean, I don't lose sleep over. I'm not trying to be glib or anything, but I, I do think about it sometimes, and you know, I, I, uh, I know he died in agony, and I, you know, I'm not cool with that. So I can't pull it up now because that fat fuck has me block Nicholas Diorio. But there's a tweet where he was like, in late 2022, uh, CRP was DMing him, terrified that you had found out like the local jail or Providence he was in. Uh, so it, it is funny to know you're on yeah. his mind even in his later days. Well, that really, um, he, you know, that's a true story as far as I know. I don't think Diorio is lying about it. And the funny thing is, I didn't have him on my mind, and certainly not to rat him out to the Ukrainians. I had no idea, you know, where, where he was or anything like that. Uh, but it, it is somewhat heartwarming to know that, that I have that reputation that I would even turn him into the fucking, uh, what is it? I forget their secret service or their secret police name or whatever, or their uh, intelligence agency name. It was, it's not the FSB, that's Russia, but they have a different name. I forget now, but um, no, I wasn't doing that though. That's why I got a kick out of it when I saw it because like no, that was never happening. Like I wasn't trying to uh, <laughs> pinpoint his location to you know fuck him over or anything. Um, you know, I was still talking my shit because he was talking his shit. But no, that was never that was never a thing. Yeah, well, it, it's just funny to think that while well, he's like in Ukraine and running away from the Ukrainian military, he's got to worry about if he's going to be featured on the kill stream or not. Yeah, or I'm gonna. Who would I even call, dude? In reality, like I don't even I, like. Even if I had some information, first off, it wasn't that serious, you know. If I had information on Warski or the eight hundred pound, uh, you know, glutton, and they were in Ukraine, I, I you know, maybe I would try to. <laughs> maybe I was trying to figure some things out, but it was never that serious, uh, for me. Just more of a regretful situation. I know people probably don't believe that the haters. But I really don't care. You know, I feel bad what happened to him. We covered all the stuff his dad said. He was heartbroken. And, you know, I, I understand the memes and the laughs about it, but it's actually kind of a really fucked up thing that happened to him. So, yeah, it is fucked up. And to think that, he, I mean, he could have been, but he had U.S. citizenship. <laughs> they didn't have to let him die over there, but he was, you know, more on the pro. Well, clearly, the Biden that. administration turned their back on him. And, that's another disgraceful aspect of it, where it's like, well, you know what? If even if he's saying stuff you don't like, he's a U.S. citizen, and you know you're supposed to do everything you can to try to, to free this guy, and they didn't quite clearly. And I don't know, it's just fucked up all the way around. Well, actually, while we're on that, I don't like to get too political, but what do you think about Trump versus Kamala 2024? Who do you want to win, and what do you think about Nick's? I, I'd call it a canceled Groper war. I don't think there really was a Groper war that took place. Um, I don't think that thing really did much. I know they did the billboards the other day and they got a lot of attention. Um, I don't think it comes off well. Uh, I think it's a kind of a lose-lose for Fuentes. If Trump loses, especially if he loses closely, like say, for instance, Georgia, where they did those billboards, um, I, I think there's going to be a lot of people out for, for Fuentes' blood. But, you know, he's got enough people uh, with him. I don't think it's going to sink him or anything. But I, I don't really understand the strategy other than, oh, I told you so, and he lost. Um, but that's not going to be a popular thing to say uh, on the right. For the most part, you know, you have your certain people who, who want to see that or whatever. But I, no, I, I, don't think it was, I think it was ill-advised uh, from the start. 
Uh, I think the billboard stuff, first off, way late in the game. You know, why are you just doing that now? I, I, I think tactically it's a mistake uh, because Trump has, it's, it's, you know, I don't even say this in a negative way, but it is like the cult of Trump, the GOP. And so I, I, I don't know what he's thinking. Uh, I thought it was a mistake from the start. And quite early on, it was already obvious he's not. And I had some of the same criticisms toward his leadership, especially back then. Uh, in August, where it's like, you know, La Savita, Chris La Savita, Susie Wiles. I don't think they were making the best calls, but you know what? If it ends up Trump winning uh, and, you know, they baited Kamala out there to expose herself more, you know, I, I'm i willing to, to be wrong on what I said. Uh, and I don't know that Fuentes is. It's not even personal with my, with my critique here, but I, I just I just think it's it was misguided. Yeah, it almost feels kind of like 2020 Richard Spencer-esque, like, uh, I'm going to be an accelerationist. We'll get a fascist dictator if Kamala wins, which just seems naive and dumb to me, but that's my take. I don't know. Uh, well, the thing, right before he did that whole war thing, he kept bringing up, he was fighting with Laura Loomer and uh, the Project uh, 2025 thing, talking about like his inside yes. circle, and he was arguing with Loomer on Twitter and really going at her. And I think that a lot, uh, it seemed like, at least to me, you know, I might be wrong about it or whatever, but it seemed like that he was upset that he didn't have like a place at the table more and that he wasn't as included as he maybe feels like he should have been, like, which is why he was like fighting with yeah. and stuff. And then I he think that's a big part uh, of it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think that he was like, oh, well, you know, um, if you aren't going to let us have any kind of, you know, say or, or place at the table, then we'll like, I'll use my people and fuck you basically. Uh, cause it was like really soon after that. I think it was, it was all within this, the same few days that he did all that. Um, and yeah, it was probably just like ill advised or something, I guess. There yeah. No, that, that talk about that. Is in bed with Trump. Do you guys buy into that at all? I personally don't. They, they're saying that Loomer's uh, fucking Donald Trump. Or that she had, I don't think she is now. She did. Um, I mean, you know, Trump's kind of, <laughs> you know, far be it for me to criticize anybody on, um, Philandering or anything like that, but um, I, you know, it's not the craziest thing I've ever heard of surrounding Trump. Um, but also, you know, it was put out there that they were going to keep her away from Trump after that because she's kind of a net negative, and they have. So I think they kind of neutralized Loomer, uh, what three or four weeks ago, and you haven't heard anything like that since. And now she's talking about suing Bill Maher, which of course is going to get thrown out. Um, the bar is really high to sue somebody uh, in public life uh, for defamation when you yourself as a public figure who says a bunch of wild shit, and I know this better than anyone, um, you, you, you're not going to win. And so I, I see it as a publicity stunt and, and a waste of money, although, you know, and, uh, except for the publicity part, right? But uh, I, I, I don't see. I don't know. Maybe she did suck him off. Maybe she didn't. I, you know, that's not the craziest thing. I, that's not the craziest thing I've ever heard regarding Trump. You know, he's known to dabble a little bit. But yeah, a little I, bit of dabbling here and there. Yeah, I mean, would it shock me if it came out? She sucked him off? No. But um, I, I don't know. I, I, I see her as being sidelined at this point. And I, I think they got to Trump and finally said, look, this this person could be a real problem, a real cancer. She's already become a problem, and you need to you need to distance yourself. And they actually got through to them because that's actually what happened. Um, and so sort of you know the same thing with Fuentes minus the sexual aspect. It's like, look, I've said this a million times. You can't go out there. And what do you think this is right or wrong? You can't go out there and throw up the Hitler salute and you know use. Just explicitly, you know, Hitler comes save us. He was saying stuff like that. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, wait, you, you, what you know what I mean? Like, optics. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he used to be the optics guy. I'm not even. This is not personal. This is just an objective analysis. You know, elected officials. Hitler is very unpopular, and so you can't. You know, you, right? <laughs> like, I mean, it, what do you think he should be or not? He is, and so you can't be an elected official or an aspiring, you know, reelected official. And, and bring that into your camp because Trump, you know, there's enough uh, ammo and, you know, some of his bullshit, but there's enough stuff out there to smear him with already. And if he openly, you know, um, embraced Fuentes, that would be really stupid. So. 
yeah, I mean, uh, kind of no shit moment, right? Like, even though yeah. uh, a lot of people think it's it's like, oh, the obvious solution, he needs to, you know, bow down to Fuentes. It's like, well, there's a lot of moving pieces. Well, no. Here. Actually, it's the opposite. And so, <laughs> I mean, right? Like, I mean, you know, whether Fuentes wants to do that or not, but if you, if you want to get on his good side, that would be the way to do it. And Fuentes has a ton of baggage, but he's not Donald Trump, right? Like, I'm not saying Trump doesn't have his own baggage. He does. Uh, but, you know, he's the guy who is the candidate for the GOP. Uh, many people think he's going to win. Now, I don't know. I still think it's 50-50. But I will say the headwinds seem to be pointing in that direction. And, you know, the idea that he has to make good with Fuentes, actually, it's the other way around. And even if Fuentes made good with him, he still couldn't, you know, openly associate with him. So... Yeah, and, and he yeah, got tricked into doing that. That whole dinner thing was the was a trick. Like he didn't know, uh, you know, Fuentes's background and you know how they were going to portray that in the media. And it was supposed to be just a dinner with Kanye, and they brought him along, right? And so, yeah, you know, it was kind of a coup for for Nick, but uh, it wasn't like, oh, I have to have this private dinner with Nick Fuentes. Kanye brought him along and basically made Trump have dinner with him. So, which is kind of funny, but. You know, it wasn't like, oh, give me Nick Fuentes, right? Like that's not what <laughs> that's not what occurred. He, you know, he's um, he's a mark for celebrity, and he's not Kanye forever. And Kanye insisted on that. And so, I, you know, I, again, I just think Nick's misguided on this, and we'll see. You know, we don't have to wait much longer a week from Tuesday uh, to see all of this stuff plays out. But uh, you know, just traditionally, uh, even Trump, who's been un unorthodox in some of his approaches. During campaigning and some of those uh, approaches I really like you know he's basically running the first racialist campaign uh, in modern history uh, whether people want to admit that or not uh, of course the left admits it but um, I you know I see it as a, as a good thing honestly <laughs> right like I mean uh, do whatever yeah. it takes to win and but still he still couches it in his, you know it's his own language right he doesn't say oh Hitler said this in 1938 wow what a great idea you had um that's that's a loser electoral league so um, that's why they're so desperate to time to hitler i have a this is a non-hostile person but there's some groiper who wants to talk about why trump's bad do you would you be willing to hear his case out he's a friend of mine he's not someone who's gonna throw bullshit at you or anything um yeah, but I'll have to go here in a few minutes, though, because I got to start getting... Okay, we'll, we'll try to... Oh, okay, yeah, I, I totally understand that. Before, if we have time, um, I'll send you the link right now. And before that, have you seen Sneeko's recent? He's He canceled the podcast with Elijah Schaefer and Myra. Sneeko and sucks. Sneeko sucks. Well, uh, I've never he's seen... He's like a Haitian Jew who doesn't know what to identify with, so he's just LARPing as a Muslim, kind of. That's my take on him. Well, yeah, it's it's a total like meme activity on his to even say he's a Muslim, and then I again I the guy I've never seen he's like the Mitt Romney of streamers as far as flip flopping goes, <laughs> and just, right? And just changing on a dime, and you know he's a chameleon, he has, right? Like yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's not that Nick hasn't changed positions. I mean, I've changed my position here there too, but you know I have reasons for it, right? Or you know I have. Oh, this, this, and that. That's why I changed my mind on a certain topic. Whereas Sneeko just, he, he doesn't really have the um, ideological chops, the ideological basis for a lot of his wild ships. And it, it makes him into, um, you know, some would say a fraud. Uh, and so I, I've never liked Sneeko. I don't like Sneeko now. And so I think he's, he's kind of like a clown. Yeah, I don't yeah. respect him as some kind of uh, thought leader, to say the least. But sorry, go ahead, Shamu. I didn't mean to cut you off. I was just going to say that there's just there's no like merit in really anything he says. He just seems like a, an opportunist to me. Like he's willing to change everything if he can get more, you know, viewership or money. I don't really think he. I don't, I just don't. I don't know. He's changed so much and, ch and flip flops so much that I just think that he's an opportunist. I don't really think there's any a lot of weight with anything he says ever. You know that when I've listened to him or watched him, I couldn't agree, agree. more. And uh, <laughs> Bithrin, who's a friend of mine, he's a Groiper. He's a Fuentes fan. You're on stage if you want to give your, uh, you know, Nick's anti-Trump at this point. If you want to give your position, uh, feel free to unmute. 
Yeah, what's going on, Ralph? I'm a big fan of you, by the way. I, I was so devastated when the fallout <laughs> happened a few years ago. I was I was rooting for you, man. But um, yeah, about the Trump thing, it's it's really just being anti-establishment. It's being anti-GOP. Like we're we're seeing past the 2024 election, and we're and we're looking forward. And you made a comment about how it's kind of like, oh, we want Hitler to be elected in 2028, like kind of accelerationist type. In a way, yes. sort of. It, it's like. But not exactly. Like we're not expecting total capitulation. We just think the stakes right now, especially with a, a war with Iran, it's just way too hot for us to like even gamble with that. And if you saw the uh, the Biden leak the other day, it's pretty serious what they intend to do. So I just don't think anybody should really be voting right now for either of these candidates. It's just it's a toss up, and it's not a good one. Well, so okay, so my thing is the Biden administration are the ones who leaked that, and so you have to say, well, you know. Were they trying to slow Israel down or was it a rogue operator and administration, uh, what have you? But there's really no daylight between Trump and Kamala on that issue. Every time she, she could differentiate herself from Trump on the issue, but she doesn't. Uh, and every time they ask her about it, she she basically takes the Trump line. Now, it's a little bit different, you know, softer edges. But they asked her about, you know, Palestinian, the Palestinian genocide that they're conducting on the Palestinians. Uh, in Palestine, uh, the Is Israelis have been doing that for over a year now, and she said, well, you know, of course that sucks, but October 7th is, is the big tragedy here, and it's like, okay, well, that was your chance to differentiate yourself, and if she ends up losing Michigan and stuff like that, she's probably going to wish that she had done so. So when I hear, like, oh, Zion Don, all this, which he always has been, by the way, but when I hear that, uh, it doesn't really resonate with me because the other candidate is in the tank for Israel too, right? And so um, now, you know, look, I, I, I realize that when Nick is on air and he's saying, Hitler, please come save us and all that, you know, a little bit of it is a, 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 maybe the most is a joke, right? You know, he's doing a bit or whatever. But I, again, <laughs> uh, I know that. You know that. Uh, I would feel like most of the people in our corner of the internet know that, but it just makes it easier to caricature him uh, in the mainstream media and to, you know, uh, use that against Trump. Now, of course, now he's pretty much anti-Trump, so maybe that's a gift towards Trump. Maybe there's some uh, super underwater 40 chest there from Nick. I don't know, but um, I, I don't think there's any... Um, and, and first off, I'm not saying I would support that. I'll be clear, but uh, I, I don't think there's any Hitlerian figure on the horizon. Um, I don't even think we could get a neutral candidate within the next two cycles uh, well, like, on, on, on Israel, much less, uh, you know, an anti-Zionist candidate. I do think it'll come at some point, but I don't think it's going to come soon. Visser, and what would be your response to that? Yeah, I couldn't agree more, especially on the Kamala thing. Like, she had so many chances to distinguish herself and she just refuses to they are building yeah. up october 7th like a new mythology you know it's like a new holocaust and they're even talking about october 7th denial and uh you know they're yes. they're using they're using i, I feel like they're going to use the trump administration this next one to like go after anti-semites pretty hard and we might actually see like a bigger censorship you know kind of like how there, were, there was censorship under trump um like vivek ramaswamy he was talking with charlie kirk and they were doing their stupid uh, tour thing, and he's like, well, um, the, the left censors everybody, and it's like, well, all the censorship pretty much happened under Trump. Like, the Elon acquisition of Twitter was under Biden. You know, so I think the, the censorship, it's not even that different either. The, the, a lot of the shilling for Trump, it just seems insincere. It's like not, it's not magical like it was eight years ago. You know? And so it's just, yeah, like, I couldn't encourage anyone to vote this cycle. It's just, you know, it's a gamble. Well, lose, that was a once-in-a-lifetime once thing. I, I think that it's it's way better. I, you know, I, I would say it's more organic and more natural than it was in 2020, uh, at least. Now it's 2016. No. Also, I think if you look at Trump's record, yeah, he says all this shit, but Trump says a lot of shit. And if you look at his record from his first term, he had the engagement with ISIS, but that had already begun before he got there. And so it's kind of, you know, he inherited that. But he explicitly critiqued uh, viciously uh, the Bush administration, the Bush family. He even did so the other day 
uh, reaching out to Arab voters. It's like, look, Kamala's campaigning with Liz Cheney, the neocon who never saw a war in the Middle East she didn't like, a war against the Arabs she didn't like, which is true. And, you know, it's just startling to me that Kamala is this bad of a politician because, you know, I don't think she would lose any votes on the left by differentiating herself here and saying, look, you know, I'm, I'm going to stop this and Israel is out of control, but she just won't do it. I don't know if it's because of her money people who are, you know, the big money people on both sides are, are Jews for the most part. Just, you know, it is what it is, right? They, there's an old saying that they play both sides. I, I won't say that, but many, many people are saying that obviously, uh, but you know, still, you know, uh, the Arabs in Michigan traditionally vote Democrat. And you look at the polls now, and Trump's leading. You know, it's not a lot, but he's totally split the Arab vote in Michigan. And that could be enough to swing that state. Uh, e either they vote for Trump, or they seem, even though they don't like Trump, they see him as more likely to be able to, um, you know, force the Isla Israelis to stop this, right, over Kamala. So they don't listen to Biden. Why would they listen to Kamala? Right. Like, I, I, I think Trump has a little more gravitas, a little more, you know, a few more chips to call in as far as something like that's concerned. And I think they're just going to ignore Kamala. So. Bang Lex says the DNC is owned entirely by Chuck Schumer. Yes. And she said, but yeah, go ahead and respond to that, Mr. And I don't want to derail by chat comments. That's totally true. Bang Lex. Uh, but well, you know, you said that Trump makes a lot of comments, and that, that's true. And he, he is a wild card in the sense that anything could happen with him. He could be totally doing some 4D chess. Like, I, I like to cope yeah. about that. Like, dude, I'm so excited to to want to vote for Trump. Like, I, I'm trying to vote for Trump so bad because I was a kid when this stuff went down in 2016. I was, like, 12 years old. So this is, like, my first time being able to vote. And so I want to vote for Trump. But, you know, it's just I just can't do that in good conscience right now. So one of the copes I tell myself is like, okay, he's making all these plays with like uh, the the Adelson money, and he's doing all this to to help with his um his prison sentence and a lot of the hot water that he's in, and maybe he's gonna do like a 4D chess and pull the rug out from under everybody, you know, even people like Elon Musk who have a vested interest in a Trump administration so that they can get you know this uh, student visas to supply their AI, you know, their their cheap labor for AI. Uh, Trump would give that to them through these student visas, and it's it's disastrous for the American people, but it's good for people like Elon Musk, and you know he's giving them like how much money a day, like a million dollars a day or something. He just he just added in another fifty million, I think, last night. It's it's, it's up to close to one hundred and fifty million, I think, total from Elon right now. Yeah, it's a huge it's a huge lobby, and and not only that, just Elon's Elon's free press, right? Like just Elon coming out and supporting him is worth. I don't well, even Mr. know. Right. Three hundred million, probably. Uh. Not to completely derail, but like, because you you dismissed my like acceleration kind of Richard Spencer twenty twenty thing, which I get that there is a difference, but I mean, are you looking at the side of lesser two evils, or you were just you're hoping that um, Trump gets the L? Honestly, I I really could care less. And you know what? I will say, I think it is for me more so on the side of Trump getting the L. And I say that because the the dissident sentiment in this country shouldn't be squandered. Like, I, I don't think, if, if Trump gets in, there's there's almost going to be an alleviation in, in the conscience of people, even if it's minute. You know, the real people will pay attention, the real people will have faith in, like, more to come. But I, I don't know, just, like, seeing normies, like, fall for the uh, election slop again, like the comrade Kamala stuff, there, there's so much rhetoric around it Kamala. It is cringe, right? It's a little it's, cringe. It's, it's just totally, it's just total rhetoric. It's like, okay, I mean, this is like the grand old party, like, okay, go vote for Mitt Romney. You know, we got to vote for Mitt Romney. Like, where, where do we draw the line? But I think they're reeling us back in with that because it's Trump. Like, this is the guy who came out and said Hillary Clinton is owned by a cabal of bankers. So, you know, we can we can be more trusting of this, but I just, I don't know. I think that's how they get us back in, and I just can't, I can't do that. My conscience can't do that, so. Well, I didn't vote for Mitt Romney. I didn't vote for John McCain uh, for a good reason. And still, I don't regret that decision. Um, I, I, I see Trump as a guy who is bombastic. Sure, he'll say a lot of shit, but push comes to shove. Um, I, I think you can see um, from his rhetoric from 2016 and just his behavior in office that he knows a war in the Middle East, uh, ground war would be totally, you know, a, a total blunder for the U.S. So 
Now, does he change his mind? Does he owe too many people? Can they pull his card? You know, I don't know. I, you know, that would remain to be seen. But I think he knows that and he said that. And, you know, yeah, he's talking a lot of shit right now. But, you know, he said he was going to walk up Hillary. He didn't, you know, he said a lot of different things he was going to do and he didn't do, um, you know, after he won in 2016. So I, I kind of see it as the, the cost of doing business with some of the people who are funding him. And then, you know, might he do something like execute us or excuse me, um, you know, it was an extra judicial killing, basically drone strikes, a Suleimani, uh, throw a few missiles up here or there. Yeah, he might. But I, I, I think uh, as far as a ground war in the, in, in the Middle East, uh, he would be unlikely to do that. I, I wouldn't say he won't definitely because, you know, again, maybe he owes so deep. Maybe they have something on him. Who knows? But. Um, I know that's been his instinct over his career, and so I wouldn't expect him to just completely so, drop out. Mister, and I want your response to that, then I have a question for you, but I'll let you respond to that first. Yeah, and, and the, the Hillary comment that he made, it, it, it didn't have the backing of, like, hundreds of millions of dollars, you know? Like, but this sure. war in Iran and these student visas, for example, like, they do. They do have lots of money behind them, and I think Trump is in a serious, like, conundrum where he, he could go to jail like he could um th there was and take this with a grain of salt but something came down the pipeline where a guy who knows baron trump or has like a mutual with baron trump said that he watched the aiden ross um nick fuentes debating dean withers stream and he came away from it like fuck he, dean he, yeah fuck that retard that total like soy cuck Dude, like him, did you see that woman who was like uh, calling him, was like laughing at his face because he was like, you know, I'm so ashamed of the boy I used to be. And he like, he was losing his mind. He's yeah, because like, he said nigga on Twitter once. Dude, he's like, <laughs> he, 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 he dropped the nigga and like, you know, Bri W. Bryce Hall. But anyway, back to what I was saying. Um, God, where was I? I'm sorry. I'm having a brain fart. You were, you were talking right about now. Baron Trump and how he watched Trump. the podcast and stuff like that. Yeah, and, and Baron Trump used to have uh, different opinions about Nick, but now he kind of thinks he's funny and he's coming around to him a little bit. But he said that he wishes Nick was more sympathetic because of Trump's situation. Like, he could lose everything, his business, and he could go to jail. And that's really why they're making a lot of these plays right now. And though that's believable, it's like, do, like, do we want the Republican Party to be inherited by J.D. Vance, of all people? And it's like, regardless of what happens, I'll say, I'll say that is the future. I'll say one good thing about J.D. Vance. Um, I think his rhetoric's been well, and I think that it... I hate to be political. I like to make fun of retards on my stream, so I don't even like to do this. But, uh, like, Democrats fear uh, a middle, a normal-aged, normal-looking guy who has Trumpist kind of rhetoric. And I also think that... Uh, let's see if Trump or Kamala was assassinated uh, in Minecraft. Who would you want? Would, do you want Walls to run the country? I mean, that guy's a total <laughs> freak, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, he is a freak. That guy's weird as fuck, dude. He's a freak. Well, well he's, a, saying, he's a freak, but he's not a Trojan horse like J.D. Vance is. J.D. Vance is a Trojan horse from Peter Thiel, and it's, yeah, you know, it's our yeah. side. Like, we got to play for our side, and it's like J.D. Vance will absolutely be a hawk in this administration and not get anybody good in, and he'll set a precedent. It's a, it's a total doomsday scenario, I think. Like, Tim yeah. Walls is just Tim Walls, you know? J.D. Vance is just there. You're right, because of Peter Thiel. Um, but, I mean, as far as... I, it, it's more of an establishment thing, right? And you have J.D. Vance in there from Peter Thiel. But, I mean, Trump has always been... He's, like, the most pro-Israeli president, I think, ever. He's given them more money than, like, any other president. That's not changed. Um, so, I mean, I think it's more of an establishment thing, for sure. But what are you going to do? There's not, I mean, there's really no option. I mean, you can you can make a stand or something, but, yeah, or alternative. Um, I mean, at least, like, if Trump gets in, there's a chance that they could get, you know, get rid of the Ukraine war. That's how I look at it. I mean, I don't really, but um, but I don't, I don't see, like, a ton of changes. It's more low energy. There's more, like, cringe, you know, movement behind them and rhetoric. But I don't really see what other option you have. I, I definitely yeah. don't want Kamala in there. I don't want to do another. I don't want to do another puppet president. From and I know. agree. And Ralph, I'm gonna let you get in because I know you have limited time. But really quick, Viserin, because I was asking this to Ralph uh, earlier. What do you think about the? I mean, Gorpa War Two that Nick said he's gonna protest in Michigan. No more Trump voters. That, in my eyes, was a complete failure. And they got maybe what they confronted Charlie Kirk once and Vivek and Charlie Kirk a few and times. one other. 
like three or four. It it, it wasn't what it was. You know, well, it, it did press better. Charlie Kirk. Charlie Kirk got pretty tilted. You know, he, he was shy. He was booing people away for uh, talking about Israel. He's like, no more questions about Israel. And they stopped streaming the events as well. So I, mean, I think it got okay, so, a little so bit. So stopping the stream. Okay, I'll I'll, I'll give you that there. But we'll, the way it was announced, it was like it's total war. It we're gonna change the fucking you know we're going to change shit. And I really don't think it played out that way from what I saw. I do think that so some people got pressed um, on the, whatever the fuck the, the Vivek uh, Kirk thing was. I don't, I don't know what the, what branding they were going by. It was like the new TP USA. Like, I think there were some good Q and a moments, but I, I don't know. Do you see that as a victory? What they did after how it got hyped up? I, th I saw it as kind of a failure and I'm, I'm not really like super anti Fuentes rhetoric in most cases, but I think that that wasn't the show he wanted. Well, I, th I think the Groyber War Two was totally like, yeah, yeah, it could have been a lot more, but I, I think Nick made a calculation about like putting people's names on a list. You know, like if if he sent a bunch of people to those rallies, like it would have um, it would have got a lot of people doxxed, like straight up. And I think. More so, it was about like making himself, making us look bigger than maybe we really were. And so you you, you saw like Chris Lasavita refreshing the page of Nick and stuff like that. So I, I think it made a little bit of an impact uh, there. Yeah, I mean the I forget the guy's name. I'm drawing a blank at the moment. But like the main Daily Wire guy when he got on Twitter Space with Nick, he's like, I watch your show all the time, Nick. You know, like he has influence for sure. Jeremy Boring. Jeremy Boring, right. exactly. Um, but. Uh, I think that the show out after like the hype was a little bit underwhelming. Was kind of my take. Well, look, it was a way to promote Puentes and get his name out there more. And in that regard, it worked. But as far as affecting the election, I don't think it worked at all. Um, I don't think some billboards in Georgia. And if you look at the billboard, it looks like a pro-Trump billboard. Like most people are just gonna drive by that and be like, "Yeah, go Trump," because of the right. Like it doesn't even. Yeah. You have to sit. I, you have I to agree. sit and think about it. Right, you have to sit and think about it so you can understand uh, what's being said that it's an anti-Trump uh, thing. Uh, I will say this, that's an old political trick, uh, so that warmed my heart a little bit. You know, you spend a little bit of money on billboards, 20, 30,000, whatever it was, and you get, you know, millions in, in free press. Uh, and so, um, you know, I would say he got at least a million, two million just in free press of people talking about it. So that's an old school political trick. Billboards are, are cheap as fuck, and so you don't have to put much money out there to get a lot, a lot of uh, playback for it. But in terms of changing the election, I don't know. He just went out there a little too far, um, making people think he could actually do that. Um, and then maybe he could have if it, if he would have planned it better. I, I don't know. It just didn't seem like his heart was in it um, after a certain point. And, you know, the billboards, billboard play this late in the game, I, I don't know if I – Really get that either, but unless it's just enhanced bunch of profile, which I think it it probably has done that, but I don't think it's going to change the um change the election. And look, I agreed with them. I even came out and said this. I said this now again. I know I have some heat over there, and you know that's for good reason. But you know, I I agreed with a lot of their. Uh, goals like especially in August, you know, Las Vegas, Wiles, get them out of here. They're blowing it. Um, I'm not in favor of increased legal immigration, um, you know. But how much of that is Trump talking out of his ass? How much of it isn't? Um, I, I I don't know. I I don't think he's necessarily going to flood the country with uh, pajits or whatever. But um, well, look at Canada and know. Australia. They implemented a similar thing. And I, I got to ask you if you don't think that's a possibility. I mean, follow the money. Like this is there's a lot of money behind this. It seems oh, like it's a real know, attention. It the last few days, but Trudeau has come out. He's fighting for his political life. There was 30 members of his own party who want him to step down, but they have no way to make him step down uh, under their own caucus rules, so they can't get rid of him. He said he's going to stay. But he also came out with a statement, I think it was yesterday or the day before, where he said, okay, we're going to pause immigration. We went a little too far with it and let these people assimilate, and we have to have a two-year pause. Not needs to be more like a 10-year pause, but uh, still, um, that was a big deal. Uh, from Trudeau, right? And so now, you know, pretty much everybody up there agrees they, they have to cut that out for a while, uh, if not forever. Um, and so, you know, I don't know. Um, I, I do know that a lot of those tech people do want the H1B1 visas uh, 
to continue and maybe even ramp up. But, you know, um, is, is that, I don't know, you can't have a perfect candidate really ever, right? So there's plenty of stuff I disagree with Trump on, and Palestine will be right there at the top of the list. But you're not going to get that perfect candidate. And, you know, do you really want Kamala in charge? I, I know that's like a cheap, you know, what about us argument. Of a freebie, but right? Like, yeah, but it's also true, though, right? Like, well, do I agree. you really yeah, want Kamala? <laughs> yeah, right? Like, do you really want her in charge? Uh, and uh, especially if she were to somehow get majorities um, in either one or both sides of Congress, you know, there's no telling what she could actually pull off now. Um, I don't think that's going to happen, but if she were to win the election sizably, she could carry some of these people. Um, so uh, again, I, I, I know it, it's um, maybe a normie con view or whatever, but I, I don't really see much option uh, other than voting for Trump or just sitting it out, I guess, if you want to do that. But that's basically a vote for Kamala really. Uh, and a third party vote. I, and I know I sound like, you know, a guy on CNN, but it's true. Uh, sitting it out or voting for a third party is basically if you're a Republican or right leaning is basically a vote for Kamala. And same same goes for her supporters too. Voting for a third like party you know, retarded in my opinion. Like, what are you doing? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's it feels good. It might make you feel good personally, but uh, those people have no chance at winning. I wish there was a viable third party. I think that there is an opportunity for that. Maybe someday I think the American people really want it, but it's just the system is, I mean, the Republicans, Democrats collude together to keep a third party from happening. Uh, and that's a fact in all in pretty much every single state. So it's not an accident that it's hard to start up a third party. They made it that way on purpose uh, to duopoly. And so, you know, I'm hopeful. I would love to see a third party, especially one that was um, – not tied down ideologically, you know, with some of these dogmatic things, and we have to support Israel on every single thing. We have to do this as the GOP. We have to do this as the left. No, just more pragmatic, uh, you know, what's best for the country, uh, whether that's, um, you know, progressive doctrine, uh, conservative doctrine, not neocon doctrine, because I don't support that under any circumstances. But you know what I mean, right? Like, you can take yeah, ideas no, when, they're, when they're good, right? Like, uh, I would love to see that, but I, you know, I think that's a ways away. It's maybe someday in the foreseeable future, but it's distant. And I'm gonna run through these. I'll skip any of them that are too uh, hostile your way. Uh, Banana Bear, the same guy I was talking shit on you earlier, says lack of a daddy come from you. Five star days. Fiona responds. I, like, I had a fa- I had a father my whole entire life uh, until he passed away in 2019. So um, something like a fatherless, I would say another word if I was on Rumble. Uh, since it's alliterative, but uh, it seems like he's doing a little bit of projection there because I uh, absolutely had a father. Um, this whole a log talking point that father after 12 or whatever, that's not, that's not the case. I talked to my father uh, up until the day that he died, so that's just moronic. And rest in peace to him. Um, funny mentioning well, lack you. of father figures. Well, I'm not going to read that one out because it ends in five star days, but I'm not going to mention Ralph's kids' names. Uh, and Black RG since five and. Since oh, by James. the way, where, where does he think I'm doing right now? What, why am I in Mexico City? I think you know. Well, I can, uh, but I can I'll, pin it up again if you want. To, if you want. No, to well, I, I, I'm not going to read it because there's certain aspects of my fatherhood that I can't talk about. But I can talk about my son all day long. There is no court order uh, stopping me from speaking against my son. Uh, you know, not against him, but about him. Uh, and so I can talk about him all I want. I talk about him every single day. That's why I'm on this trip. It's not for my health. It's to go see my son. And so that's the only reason that I'm not doing a show today because I'm in Mexico City. Uh, I'm about to be in Tijuana, and then I'm going to cross over to California. I'll be seeing my son tomorrow. Uh, I'll be seeing him on Sunday, and then I'll be flying back home. That's the whole point of the trip. Uh, So, yeah, uh, I talk about my son Alexander all the time, uh, and nothing stops me from doing that. And I do appreciate you making the time for it. I know some of your fans dropped in uh, throughout. Yeah, the- and shout out to them. Shout out to any kill streamers in the audience. But, I mean, it's just retarded. Like, I've seen A-Log say that. It's like, well, okay, I talk about Alexander all the time. Uh, I've given in detail, you know, um, uh, blow, well, not blow by blow, but, you know, general general things on what happened on our, our visit and stuff like that. Nothing legally stops me from doing that, and I do that. Uh, and I don't care who likes it because I'm allowed to do that. Now, there are other situations that unfortunately 
you know, it'll change someday, but uh, I can't talk about it right now. Yeah, it is what it is, but uh, no, I can say whatever I want. Uh, I'm going to literally be with him tomorrow. And so, you know, it, it's just flipping like a, somebody with no knowledge in the situation. Well, I'm glad to hear that you will be with your son tomorrow. That I'm sure. Well, that's the whole point. That's why I'm here. Like, I didn't go to Mexico City. I mean, I'm in Mexico City on a layover. Like, I'm not here, you know, partying. Uh, it's just a long layover. So, and originally, I was going to go to the shrine, but I had to postpone that because I want to do that right. And the shrine, the Guadalupe shrine, is a lot bigger than I realized at first. So, I'm going to get a guided tour next time I come through here and do that right. But, um, yeah, I've seen my son, uh, what, every month, I think, since since June. So, yeah, I, I can I can talk about my son. Now, I can't post pictures of him, but neither can the other side either. Well, uh, you don't because, want these free seven pictures of your kid. I mean, look at who yeah. follows you. That's not a, that's not a diss. Nah, you, but I'm just being real. No, nah, you're right. You're right. I mean, and part of me would, like, I mean, they're awesome pictures. He looks just like me. Um has my personality in a lot of ways. Although, not to say his mother has no influence either. Like, I'm not trying to slack her off. But, um, you know, part of me, it would be cool if I was a normal person to be able to post stuff like that. But I can't post pictures of him. She can't post pictures of him. Uh, and that's been decided in court. So, um, I love it or now, hate it, you aren't a normal person, Ethan Ralph. I mean... Ethan yes, that's Ralph. true. Yeah, I know. I realize that more than anyone. So, um, it's, it's good. It's good that I can't. It's good that she can't. It's good that he has privacy. Um, but I get photographs from every visit. Uh, matter of fact, the center, uh, the center, um, like nobody else gets that. Like it's, it's supposed to be no pictures, no recordings, etc. But I have a court order saying that I get pictures there. So, um, last time I was there, they were even like, Hey, can you not like, like mention that too openly? Like while some other parents are there because they don't get that right. And it's, it's, um, it's kind of an anomaly that you get it. And the reason I get it is because I don't get pictures other ways, right? Um, so yeah. well, I went to court. It's a complicated court. situation. These chatters yeah. don't know about it, to be honest. Um, well, I've talked about it. I don't go fuck. I mean, I went to court and fought for that, right? Uh, and so it's been mutually decided by court, like that he stays off the internet on both sides. Uh, and that was that, that was fine by me, so. And last but not and thanks for sharing that. Last but not least, RG for five bucks says James Craig sucks dicks for two dollars. Yeah, that's a guy named Groovy Jimmy. Um, I'm sure, considering how the internet works, you'll have a run in with him someday. Um, Viserin, I know I kind of cut you off. I, I'm sure you probably lost your train of thought, but if you did have any more to say, you and Ralph were having a good discussion on the uh, Trump campaign. Yeah, I think he's. That. I think he's an honest uh, broker. I, I don't see him as like. I've known um, him for a while. He's a good guy. Yeah, I don't see him as uh, a phony guy out there. Uh, I think he's saying what he believes, but, you know, I'm saying what he believes too, and I'm aware of all Trump's flaws. I didn't vote for Trump because I thought he was straight up uh, on everything or even most things, right? Like, I mean, he kind of flies by the seat of his pants in a lot of ways. Uh, I voted for Trump because the media hates him, the left wing hates him, uh, and it's just a hand grenade and all their shit, and I still think that's true. Well, the last thing I'll say is, you know, you guys discount a third-party candidate, but I wouldn't be so sure. I mean, Carl Benjamin put up quite a fight. I mean, he, he, made, <laughs> <laughs> he, made, he made the book. Yeah, yeah. He's <laughs> back. He's back, man. He did it. He got monetized again. He's live stream. He did his first stream under that Sargon of Akkad account like a few days ago. Like, yeah, I got recommended a video from him, and I'm like, this guy, what does this guy even have to say anymore? Like, <laughs> yeah. And I also hate to derail again, but shout out to you, Ralph, for somehow managing to get Milo and Sargod on the 10 year Gamergate reunion stream. You know, gamers rise up. That was legendary to see. Well, you know what? I wish I could take the credit for that, but Milo said he would make it happen. He made it happen. Um, uh, me, him, and Sargon uh, fell back into place like it was the old Gamergate days and, and had a good. Uh, I don't know, about an hour and a half or so, maybe discussion. It's up on my channel on Rumble. Uh, but I enjoyed it. You know, I apologize for a couple of things I said. That wasn't a prerequisite, by the way. And Sargon says it on the on the stream. You know, I just said some things uh, in the heat of the moment uh, about uh, about his... I mean, people know. Um, you know yeah, he said, you I'm glad he lost his channel. His kid died or whatever. But I mean, it's in the yeah. heat of the moment. People say shit. Who cares? Well, also, I had resisted that for months and months. And Dame Pesos and other people had just outright done it. And, like, it had happened on my show, but I didn't partake in it. And then he said that, like, right after I got banned. And, you know, I just thought of the meanest, nastiest 
most brutal thing I could say, which is kind of how I do blood sports. Fun fact. And, sorry, go but ahead. I didn't have any kids. That, I didn't have any kids then. I hadn't been through um, those types of um, situations. You know, I've never been through um, a partner who had a miscarriage or anything. But you know, that's that's a bit of fear. You know, when, when your your partner's pregnant and there might be a rough rough patch with their health or whatever. You never know, right? Um, and so I don't know. I just I have a different perspective toward it. Now. Uh, not that I'm going soft, but I, I shouldn't have said those things, and I wanted to get that off. Everyone has my, regrettable my, moments. Yeah, th that was for my career. own. Yeah, that was for my own uh, conscience and karma. It, it, it wasn't really um, for anything else, but I enjoy, I enjoyed it a lot. So my that was my love. <clears throat> yeah, Visser, and do you have a uh, bunch more to add on to? I mean, you guys were having a good debate going on there that I kind of sh cut off to bring up drama. No, it's okay because I got to go at seven anyway. Well, seven local time, so um, okay, you're about because, to head out of here. Because, yeah, I'm about to head out because I I gotta I'm about to fly to Tijuana and uh, and do all that stuff. Get ready to cross into California, California. Going going back back to Cali, Cali. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I still have a while. Uh, you know. Two or three hours for the fight, but I want to make sure I'm there and ready to go. So, cool. All the you've never been to the Mexico City Airport, but they usually don't give you the gate until like fifteen or twenty minutes, if that. That you need to be at the gate, and if you miss it, you're just shit out of luck, and you have to wait for the next flight. And that happened to me once or twice this year. And so this airport, I, I like it in a lot of ways, but man, it is. Uh, fly by the city of your pants in terms of what gate a plane is going to be. They don't know until like five or ten minutes before, and you better be ready to get to that gate because you only have, you know, I don't know, 15 to 30 minutes worth of boarding time. And so uh, it's, it's wild here. Yeah, that's a good idea. I remember that you tweeted about it a couple times where you had missed yeah. a Well, <laughs> and then the A log should have say, oh, he's fucked up and this and that. And I was yeah. like, well, I wish I, wish I could have blamed it on that. Uh, actually, no. I just wasn't in the right part of the airport. I tried to, you know, get there on time, but they wouldn't let me on. So, oh man, that must have sucked. Baby. Yeah, well, you know, to be fair, Aeromexico did give me a ticket. You know, I didn't have to pay for another one, but I've had to pay for another one before in a similar situation. So, I don't want to do that. So, uh, but yeah, man, I appreciate you having me on. I appreciate the conversation with this. Uh, I thought it was uh, very substantive. I I understand completely where he's coming from i'll just say that um but i guess i'm a little bit more jaded a little bit more cynical about what does trump actually mean and you know i, I and also i don't want to hear kamal harris's voice for five years so <laughs> yeah no, uh, no. And, uh, or four years whatever uh well, right like I'm very, uh, I'm very appreciative of your time i'll let Mister uh give you a closing too since you guys had a little sure. to debate but yeah i'm very appreciative of you coming on i appreciate it man yeah, thank you for having me, man. You know, I don't get on YouTube too often, so I appreciate you having me. I'll be willing to do it again sometime if you don't. You have to, yeah, I, I'd love to have you back on. You you have to try to renew that ban on YouTube, Ralph. You yeah, you know, I've thought it. about it. I've thought about it. They reinstate a lot of people. I'm going to look into that when I get home. Um, also, I don't know how bad the audio has been because I've been in the smoking lounge. Um, no, this is not a bar. Uh, this is a smoking lounge uh, at the Mexico airport. I really want a cigarette, so... Um, but yeah, I don't know how bad the audio. Hopefully, you can hear me clearly during this. Uh, I can't tell, but no, it's good. Uh, you can tell you're on your phone, but the audio is yeah. clear and good. Okay, good. Well, that's good to hear. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Bisser. Give me your phone right there. Well, don't worry. I know my audio is really scuffed too. Um, I'm trying to think what what I could say. Uh, yeah, about about Kamala's voice. I mean, I feel, I feel like they'll put any stupid voice up there. But yeah, it was fun. It was fun meeting you, dude. Like I said, you wanna. You're one of my, you know, you're an internet legend. You're like one of my internet dads. You're, you're a hero to me. So <laughs> it, was, it was cool meeting you, dude. But yeah, you take care, man. Thank you, man. It's cool talking to you. And I appreciate the, the good, the good nature, the good spirit. And again, I, I sympathize with everything you said. Um, maybe, uh, maybe I'm jaded. Maybe I'm uh, getting to be an old man now and just cynical. I don't know. But uh, we will have the answers, hopefully on election night. And it's not, you know, a week worth of limbo bullshit. Uh, because I think, honestly, either way it goes, I think that's the worst thing for the country in terms of faith in our elections and faith in our officials, which they're almost zero faith in either. So I, I just hope they have a winner uh, that night. 
Either way, uh, we, we need to have a winner declared. Even if they cheat, we need to have the winner declared that night. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Right? Like, it needs to be declared that night. So um, that, that's my take on that. And yeah, man, I appreciate you guys for having me. Thank you for the kind words. This, this with Shamu, uh, great guy. Yep, take it easy, Ralph. Have a good flight, man. Have a good trip. Thanks. Thank you, man. I appreciate you guys. Uh, I'm going to get off here. Killstream will, will be back on Monday, 2 p.m. Eastern. None of this will, will affect the Monday show because uh, I fly out. Uh, and we'll be back very early Monday morning, at least local time. I should get back to my crib uh, with plenty of time to prepare the show. November 5th, the big election stream. I'm starting at 10 a.m. I'm going until they declare a winner. That might be famous last words, as I, as I just got through saying. Uh, that was my, that's my plan, though. Uh, so we'll see what happens on November 5th. We're going to have a bunch of guests. I won't go through them all right now. But um, thank you. Uh, Thank you so much for having me, man. It was great. And thank you to Shamu and uh, Mistress. I enjoyed that conversation. Yeah, I'd, lo I'd love to have you back on. Your Rumble's linked in the description for any of the new people who aren't avid Ralph viewers. Go check him out. He streams almost daily. It uh, takes like Sundays or Saturdays off sometimes. Yes, that's right. Uh, oh, and oh, another thing through the election. So when I get back, I think it's the 28th when I get back uh, on Monday, I will be going all the way through next weekend. Uh, normally, I do take at least one weekend day off or, or a lot of times two, but I'm going to go on both weekend days all the way through election week. So I'll have the big election show on the 5th, but I'm going to be there on the 6th. That'll be a huge day uh, and the whole fallout for the rest of the week. And then I'll probably take the next weekend off, but there should be 12 kill streams in a row once I get back. Uh, uh, looking forward to it. And uh, thank you for having me, man. Yeah, anytime, Ralph. Uh, have a safe flight, right. safe travels. Have a good rest of your weekend. All right, you guys too. Take care. Be safe. Take care. See you. All right, bye-bye. Thank you for watching this clip by Colonel J. This is the King of Bold here. Remember to like and subscribe. Juice!